Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren. And today I'm going to actually make some baby back ribs, sous vide barbecue. Uh, got these on sale at the uh, Sprouts Market. Get a $2.77 a pound. Good deal. We have some people coming over tomorrow night um, for Memorial Day weekend. So it's uh, about 9 o'clock on Saturday night. So I want these done tomorrow for dinner time. I'm going to actually sous vide these um, for about 18 hours at 155 and then we're going to take them out uh, tomorrow afternoon and throw them on the grill for a couple hours to get some smoke, get a good bark and uh, finish them up. So uh, usually what I do with baby backs or any kind of ribs, pretty much any kind of meat, pork butt, I take it out of the cryo pack um, bag here and I just wash it off, rinse it off with water. Um, I'm not one that will add any other kind of uh, mustard or oil or anything like that to get the, the rub to stick, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and open these up, wash them off a little bit, remove any membrane that may be on there, and then we're gonna season them up, put them in the bag. So I'll be okay, back. Okay guys, I'm back. Uh, got my bags prepped for the vacuum sealer, got my rub out here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a nice liberal uh, coating of this pork candy from Running Wild on these ribs. And I'm going to uh, put another coating on them when they come out of the sous vide bag. But I like to get a nice coating on them, get that uh, rub all worked into the meat. It will flavor the meat internally a little bit. Not too much, it will go in. Because there are some things in this rub that will penetrate the uh, meat some. But I usually know this, most of the rubs and stuff before I sous vide, I do season the meat to get a good surface uh, coating. And then I usually will add a little bit more when they do come out of the bag. So uh, it doesn't have to go too crazy on the rub when you're doing, before you put them in the bag because you are gonna put a little bit more on after the fact. But I just get a good even coat of this pork candy on there. And I'm going to flip them ball all over here. Some comes off, I'm not too worried about it. I will put it on both sides just so we can have a nice even, even seasoning on the, the whole racks. So, like I said, I don't use mustard and I don't use, um, I don't use oil or any kind of binder. I found that water is the best binder for the meat. Um, I've never had a rub come off because I didn't use mustard or any other kind of binder. And my moisture is what actually makes the <laughs> rub stick to the meat the best anyway. The moisture is what gives you the smoke, the smoke to stick to the meat as well. So I'm just gonna finish up putting a nice coat on the back of these ribs. And then we're gonna put them in the vacuum bags. Hey guys, I thought I'd show you this uh, little idea. I'm sure if you've ever watched sous vide anything or any other sous vide videos, I did kind of show you this uh, folding um, little trick. You fold the end of the bag, the vacuum bag over uh, a good couple inches so that when you are putting a bigger piece of meat in that uh, you try to keep these areas clean for the seal. So I didn't do it on the last one. I'm gonna do it on this one, just kind of show you how the difference is. And all it really is, just, it's just trying to keep these areas on the bag clean from any kind of spices or moisture. And um, when you're done putting the meat in, you just fold them back over and then hey guys, seal it. I got both of the uh, packs of baby backs all vacuum sealed up. Like I said, I got two racks in each one. You can see they fit in there pretty good. Um, do you have the rub on there? I said, I love the uh, pork candy. I'm going to actually get ready to throw these in the, uh, I got my sous vide cooler going, heating up. We're going to throw those in for 18 hours. Uh, we'll check back with them after we get out of church tomorrow, about noon. So um, they should be done by then, but I'm going to actually going to take these outside and I'll show you how I got the cooler set up. It's coming up the temp right now. All right, guys, I wanted to show you something while I got my uh, sous vide cooler heating up here. Just want to show you one of the reasons why I like this Gourmia GSV 140 is the way it, it faces out, you know, towards uh, faces out towards you, 
um, the way it's set up. You see where the clip is on, uh, on the outside of the container here. And you also have the face facing out. A lot of times, uh, even on the other Gourmet unit, they actually have the face turned the other way. So you either have to put it on the back side of your container to be able to look straight onto it, or you gotta turn the whole container, you know, turn your head sideways. So, but I like this one because I can actually clip it to the front here and have the uh, face, you know, face I'm gonna go ahead and throw out. these packets in. You see, I'm just gonna lay them in. So you just lay right in there. And as you can see, you know, got a good amount of water in there. I'm gonna actually throw a little rack on top of them just to make sure that they don't float up above. But probably not gonna have a whole lot of floatage because they are pretty pretty thick. But I'm gonna put a little rack on top of them. I'm gonna throw my lid on. And we'll see you guys back here in another 18 hours. All right guys, we're back. I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, fire going because uh, the ribs will be pulled out in about a half hour or so. I'm probably going to pull them just a little bit early. It's been almost 17 hours. When you're doing a cook that long, it really doesn't matter if you're short a half hour or 20 minutes or so. Um, they're, they're, they're pretty much done uh, cooking uh, in the tenderness I want them to be at. And I'm going to go ahead and light up my uh, fire starters here. Get them going. Get this fire up to temp. Get some smoke rolling. So when I'm ready to pull those ribs out, in a half hour or so, I can just throw them right on here. And I'm gonna throw some uh, some beans on as well. I'm gonna use my uh, extended rack on this Joe, Big Joe, so that we can actually do a couple uh, items on here. So I'm gonna let these fire starters burn out and get the fire going real well. And then we'll throw some pecan wood on here. I'll be back to show you that. Throw some pecan wood, sit the heat deflectors in and let the grill come up to temp. Be back in a minute, guys. All right, guys, our fire starters are all burned out. Fire's starting to cook along pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple chunks of pecan wood in here. And like I said on my other cooks, you know, these Kamado uh, style grills, you don't really need a whole lot of wood to make enough smoke to, uh, to you know, make the meat taste good. So it's one of the things I like about them. I don't need to load up big tons of bricks. I don't have to, uh, Keep opening it up and adding more wood to make smoke. You know, one or two chunks like this is gonna work just great. Uh, I'm actually gonna put the ribs on and a thing of uh, baked beans. So we're gonna actually close this up. I'm gonna put the uh, collector plates in right now. We're gonna cook indirect on here. We're not gonna cook directly over the fire. So I'm gonna put my grates on, my heat deflectors. I already see some of that smoke starting to roll. I'm gonna close this up and let the grill come up the tank. Right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull these out. We've been sitting at 155 for almost 17 and a half hours. So just a little bit shy of 18, which like I said, on a long cook like this, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes in the sous vide is not gonna make a whole lot of difference. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these out. I'm going to shut my sous vide off. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. Just going to set it over here so it cools off. It runs for about a minute after I shut it off. Cool it off. Take my lid off and show you. So this has been sitting here for almost 18 hours, and we've lost pretty much no water because of the uh, insulation of the cooler and the lid. So not, not very much evaporation at all, if any, probably very, very much, uh, so little you couldn't measure it. But you see my ribs are down in there, they haven't floated to the top. I have a couple things holding them down there. They're sitting in there pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and take them out of the water, put them on a rack, um, put them back on a pan. And I'm gonna add a little bit more rub to these. Um, so I will do that when we pull them out and I'll get back to you when I got them out. All right, this is what they look like coming out of the bag. And you know, they don't look too delicious, but what we're gonna do is gonna rub some of our pecan butter rub from Running Wild on there. We put the uh, pork candy on the beginning. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and we cooked it in the pork, in the pork candy and we're gonna finish it with the uh, pecan butter. See how that tastes. 
I've tried it with just the pecan butter before. I tried it with just the pork candy and they come out awesome. But I thought I'd mix it up a little bit and kind of do a mixed cook. So you try it cooking it in the sous vide with one rub and then finishing it with another. I really like the pecan butter, the way it tastes. It, uh, it's kind of hard to describe. It does really does take, taste like pecan. Um, and using the pecan wood with the pecan rub, I think it's gonna make it taste pretty awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rub on. I'm not gonna bore you with showing you how to shake it on there. I'm gonna shake it on there and then uh, show it to you before I put it on the grill what they look like. I'll be back guys. Right. Cooker's right up to about 275. Smoke's rolling pretty good. I got the pecan butter rub on those baby backs. It's looking pretty good. Like I said, there's a, these are pretty much already done. They're, they're almost falling apart when you're picking them up. So we're just gonna get a little bit of smoke to them and uh, get, some, get some bark on them. I'm also gonna throw some baked beans that I put together on, on the top. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm actually gonna put this extended wrap on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these on the, throw these uh, ribs on the grill. I'll put that uh, extended rack on top, put the beans on, and I'll come back and show you how that setup works. All right. I'll be back, guys. Now you'll see why, one of the reasons why I love the Big Joe. I got four full racks of baby backs in there uh, with plenty of room to spare without using a rib rack. They're in there pretty good. We're on direct, indirect heat. So now I got my extended rack in there and I got a pan of beans on top. So these are gonna roll for about, about two hours. I'm gonna come back and check on them in about, you know, 45 minutes, see how they're doing. But uh, I'm gonna close this up, let them get some smoke and get some bark, and we'll be back. Hey guys, I'm back. I just wanted to kind of show you something here. I don't like to sauce my ribs when I'm cooking them. I like to give uh, my guests the option of putting the sauce on themselves. So what I normally do is take a couple different uh, kinds of sauce, put them in bowls with some spoons, they can put it on themselves. And we're gonna be using the Running Wild sauces at a, that are pretty popular. I've uh, got the original hickory and the hot. So I'm going to give those the options for the guests today. Just thought I'd share All right. That. I think we're about done here. It's been on uh, right about two hours. Still got some good smoke. The beans are done. Look at that smoke cloud. Back it up a little bit. But those uh, ribs are looking nice and nice bark on them, nice and dark. Beans are done. I'm going to go ahead and pull them off and um, cut them up. So I'll be back in a minute, show you how I'm gonna cut these up. All right guys, I brought them in off the grill. They're looking uh, really nice right now. You can tell that bark is set pretty good. A nice color to them, nice and juicy. I can smell the pecan smoke. If I serve these to people, they wouldn't have any idea that they were cooked sous vide before they were put on the grill. I'm getting ready to chop these up. We're gonna eat them up. That's the beans. Beans are good as well. All done. Got the corn out. Got my sauce is all laid out. We're gonna chop these up and eat them. Thanks for joining me. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Follow us on our YouTube channel. Make sure you like this video and share with friends. Thanks again. Subscribe.